Now we begin the second installation of week six lectures, Indoor Air Quality, or IAQ, in the interior design world. Now SBS, or sick building syndrome, is the overall result of air pollutants within a building that could be caused by the building's materials and finishes, the construction methods, and or uh, poor design of the HVAC system. Usually headaches, upper respiratory irritation, eye irritation, and nausea and vomiting are some symptoms. Gases can be organic, inorganic, visible, or invisible. Carbon dioxide is an odorless gas that we exhale, and when there's excess carbon dioxide in the air, it can cause discomfort and stuffiness, usually the result of poor ventilation. Several common pollutants are products of combustion, such as coal burning factories, vehicle exhaust, or heating exhaust. The largest contributor is tobacco smoke. Ozone is an irritating pale blue gas made of three oxygen particles that are explosive and toxic even at low concentrations. The gas could come from copy machines, electrostatic air, air cleaners, or high voltage electric equipment. It can be prevented with proper ventilation. Tobacco smoke is the most common indoor air pollutant. And soil gases include methane and other gases released by decomposing garbage in landfills or leaking sewage lines that can be both toxic and explosive. Some odors may not be unhealthy, but can cause headaches, nausea, and loss of appetite. VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, tend to evaporate at room temperature and contain carbon. They are invisible fumes or vapor and may smell or only be, detected, uh, only be detectable by equipment. Most will evaporate from interior furnishings and finishes when they're installed. The installation of large volumes of furniture, wall partitions, dry cleaned items, large scale painting and cleaning, the installation of wall and floor coverings can all result in a higher than normal release of VOCs. Formaldehyde is the most widespread VOC and a major contributor of SBS. It's colorless, strong smelling, and usually released by particle board and foam insulation. So try to seek alternatives with lower VOCs. There are green products for fabric, carpeting, ceiling tiles, and other things that do have low VOC content. Some tips in controlling VOCs to keep your clients healthy are using the maximum amount of outside air ventilation during the installation process. Now, don't channel this through the HVAC system, but allow a direct exit through a window. Operate the building at the lowest possible temperatures to slow the release process. Try to age materials prior to installation, meaning open the boxes and let them air out before you put them in the building. And you can also try for a bake-out period that should usually be done by a professional, but it's where you install all the finishes, seal the building, bring the heat to 80 degrees, and then ventilate for 72 hours to one week. Now there are also biological contaminants, not just chemical contaminants that we just talked about. These include pollens, spores, dander, skin scales, and ground food particles like coffee, uh, urine from rats and mice, which can become airborne when dry. And there are several things that these things will need to grow indoors. First of all, a, a source, um, water or humidity, nutrients like skin cells, and favorable temperatures. Now, these are often the result of inadequate prevention and maintenance. And try to avoid specifying furnishings that will collect dust, especially if they cannot be washed with hot water. Now, the final culprit of poor indoor air quality are mineral and glass fibers. A lot of these are caused by the breakdown of the interior duct lining and fireproofing that can put fibrous mineral particles into the air and result in burning eyes, itchy skin, lung damage, and even cancer. Asbestos was a fire retardant and has been known for thousands of years. It's a natural product, but if inhaled, it has caused fibrous scarring of the lungs and fluid in the lungs. Now, most can be left undisturbed as long as it does not emit fibers into the air. It can be sealed and covered with sheet metal. That's called encapsulation, and it may be more expensive to do that than actually remove it, 
This must be done by a professional. Lead is another hazard and it was used in uh, paint and improperly glazed ceramics, leaded crystal, foil on wine bottles, glass artwork, all may contain lead. Lead poisoning is the number one health hazard for kids under seven and houses built prior to 1950 are likely to contain lead paint. This should definitely be identified and then removed by a professional. If the surface is clean and not cracked, then it could be encapsulated. All right, that's all we have for indoor air quality. Now stay tuned for the next video on heating and cooling systems.